people were familiar with me and face. They knew that we would be honest people. At least I looked honest at the time. <laughs> and uh, so we delivered. And I got to ask you about the zero commission thing you went to last week on equities and ETFs. It really rocks the world. It's super important to make sure you've got enough cash to live the good life. Naturally, a lot of people are curious about how much dough they need to be comfy. But figuring out the bare minimum you need to live off any investment, that's a whole strategic game. In this video, I'll break it down for you using SCD. We'll dive into what this ETF is all about. And by the end, I'll lay out three smart strategies for both short-term and long-term goals. Plus, I'll spill the beans on the minimum amount of cash you need for each strategy. One of them is so easy, even a broke college kid could swing it. Okay, let's start with a quick rundown on ETFs or exchange-traded funds. Picture them like these budget-friendly bundles of investments that you can trade on the stock market, just like single stocks. They keep tabs on the performance of a whole mix of stuff, stocks, bonds, or other assets. Now, a dividend ETF? That's a specific type that tracks a bunch of stocks and bonds from companies that pay out dividends. They're pretty sweet because they let you invest in loads of these dividend-paying companies without having to pick each one out yourself. And here's the kicker. Since ETFs spread your dough across so many companies, if one of them tanks, it's not going to tank your whole investment ship. Alright, let's talk about one of these ETF champs, the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF, brought to you by Charles Schwab. This bad boy hit the scene back in 2011 and aims to mirror the performance of big US companies that are seen as solid value investments. It's not lightweight either, boasting over $52 billion in assets, which makes it one of the heavy hitters in the ETF game, especially for companies of this kind. So, how does it all work? Well, here's the scoop. Unlike some ETFs with a human manager calling the shots, this one runs on a set formula. The portfolio can shake things up over time though. So, if you're putting your cash into SED, you're banking on Schwab's method. SED's game plan involves hunting down companies that not only pay dividends, but also have a knack for growing those payouts over time. They've got a checklist for adding companies to their list, including things like a solid track record of dividend payments for at least a decade, a hefty market worth of at least $500 million, and a manageable debt-to-profit ratio. Plus, they're looking for companies that aren't putting all their eggs in one basket. No single company can hog more than 4% of the portfolio, and they keep a lid on how much they're investing in any one industry, like tech or healthcare. Just remember, when you're tossing your dough into SED, you're banking on Schwab smarts. There's no human hotshot pulling the strings, so the portfolio can shuffle around as the time goes on. So let's talk about SED's performance over the past decade. It hasn't exactly been blowing minds, especially when you stack it up against the S&P 500, especially with the whole pandemic mess. But hey, that stumble could be your golden ticket to snagging it at a bargain. The game for this fund aims to keep pace with the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index, and it's not going to nickel and dime you with fees. Lately though, SED has been flexing its muscles, bouncing back impressively with a sweet 14.3% gain since bottoming out last October and hitting peak performance by today's standards. Now, when it comes to diving into dividend stocks or ETFs like SED, you have to keep your eyes peeled for future returns. Right now, SED's forward yield isn't exactly sky high, clocking in at 3.5%. That's a bit lower than the yields you could snag from US Treasury bonds, which are flirting with rates between 4.62% and 5.37%, thanks to inflation riding high. But with all the roller coaster action we've seen lately and the foggy crystal ball ahead, trying to outshine the market with SED might not pan out as you hope. So, while I'm still all aboard the SED train for long-term diversification, it might be savvy to hold off a bit, let those prices dip, and wait for those yields to perk up before diving in headfirst. And hey, that's where those three nifty strategies I'm about to dish out come into play at the end of the video. Each one's tailored to give you the biggest bang for your buck. Oh, and speaking of bucks, SED's been doing some sprucing up in its portfolio lately. They do this every year and tweak things every quarter, adding some stocks, kicking out others, all based on that checklist we chatted about earlier. Alright, let's dive into the ETF makeover. So the ETF waved goodbye to 23 stocks in its lineup. Among the notable exits were heavy hitters like Broadcom and the Federal Agricultural Mortgage Corporation. Broadcom was on fire, with its dividends shooting up by a whopping 17.5% over 5 years, despite starting with a low yield. And let's not forget AGM, which was flexing its muscles with some strong fundamentals and just hiked its dividend by a jaw-dropping 27.3%.
But hey, it wasn't all doom and gloom on the chopping block. Companies like 3M and Paramount Global were also shown the door. Para even got slapped with a junk rating for its long-term debt, and 3M's dividend growth hit a speed bump due to financial woes. But hey, out with the old, in with the new. The ETF welcomed 23 fresh faces into the fold. Some of the newcomers caught our eye, like Cincinnati Financial Corporation and Bristol Myers Squibb. CINF has been the poster child of consistency, serving up revenue and dividend growth for over six decades. And BMY? Well, it's looking pretty promising, with a solid starting yield and a trend toward beefing up its dividends. Overall, SED follows a specific rulebook for its portfolio. If you're a believer in that playbook, it could be a solid investment. It's managed to hold its own without relying on the big tech titans like Apple or Amazon. Still, some folks have been throwing shade at the recent shakeup, pointing out that some of the newbies took a tumble in the short term. But hey, they've got sturdy fundamentals, so they might just bounce back in the long haul. And now, my friends, we've reached the grand finale, dividends. All right, let's break it down into a nutshell. SCD, the ETF we've been chatting up, might seem like it's playing it cool with a 3.5% dividend yield. But don't let that fool you. This baby's all about the long game, and when it comes to dividends, it's been flexing its muscles. Over the past decade, SED's dividends have shot up by a jaw-dropping 42%, with an average yearly growth of 10.87%. Not too shabby, right? Even in the last five years, it's been churning out an impressive 11.8% growth annually. But here's the kicker. While those dividends are blossoming beautifully, they do take their sweet time to stack up. If you're eyeing retirement or already kicking back in it, you might not have the patience to wait around for those dividends to fat in your wallet. That's where SED's starting yield of 3.5% might leave you wanting more immediate cash flow. But fear not, my friends, for I've got a trio of game plans ready to roll for both short and long terms. These strategies are tailored to fit snugly into your financial goals, whether you're a seasoned investor or just starting. And guess what? One of these plans is so budget-friendly that even a college student with a pocket full of pennies can get in on the action. Before we dive into those strategies, let's crunch some numbers. Picture your monthly spending, averaging around $3,400 in the US for a single person. But hold the phone. As time marches on, thanks to inflation, those expenses are bound to swell. Over the past decade, prices have been creeping up by about 2.65% each year. Fast forward 30 years and you could be looking at a hefty monthly bill of $7,000 or an eye-watering $84,000 annually just to keep the lights on and the fridge stocked. Let's break down our strategies for securing your financial future. Strategy 1, the year 1 goal, aims to start paying you dividends right off the bat. For this, you'd need about $116,571 to generate an annual dividend of $40,800 or $3,400 per month. Strategy 2. The future retirement one-time investment is for those with 30 years until retirement. Investing around $225,000 in SED could set you up for an impressive annual dividend of $84,458 or $7,300 per month. But what if you don't have that much cash up front? Enter Strategy 3, the Monthly Retirement Strategy. By investing just $225 each month over 30 years, you could still end up with a substantial portfolio, raking in $84,458 annually. These strategies offer pathways to financial security, whether you're starting with a hefty sum or building your wealth over time. And if you're hungry for even more financial wisdom, check out the video on turning $100,000 into $20 million. It's a game changer.